reasons for my change is not to harm anyone. Quite the contrary, I want everyone to find benefit of the information that I've learned throughout all this research I've done. The reason for my change is not to debunk anyone or to say that I have better information than anyone. The reason is actually to enrich what we already know, to bring more knowledge and probably cover some blind spots that the people who are in the raw vegan movement probably have. Again, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm saying that all this research that I've been doing along this six months to 12 months, almost a year, have made me realize that I cannot longer eat a low protein diet. I'm still high raw vegan, but I eat rather than low protein, a moderate protein content and not a low fat content, but rather a low to moderate fat content. The reason for the change is not to go against those in the community who have been doing raw veganism for longer than me. I mean, I was raw vegan, living it, believing it for five years. And those five years, I stick to it, I made it work for me, and I never had any problems. However, certain things came to my radar that were no longer possible to keep ignoring. This type of knowledge that came to my radar made me realize that I was having a blind spot in order to realize the importance of the macronutrient that is protein, and I cannot disregard it. So again, going back to my point number one, the reason for me sharing this type of information is not to harm you, quite the contrary. This has been the purpose of this channel, to help you be healthy. And if I discover something along the way, I have the responsibility to communicate that to you. The reason for my change as well has nothing to do with selling you something or saying, oh, don't go with that coach or don't go with that person. I have the information, I'm better than them. Not at all. I don't offer any coaching. This channel is just educational. I do it on my free time. I don't sell you anything. I'm not going to sell you a supplement. I'm not going to sell you a protein powder. So no, it's not propaganda to push protein, you know. It's just discovering the importance of increasing this important macronutrient. The reason for my change is not to include animal products. I'm an ethical vegan to begin with. Before being raw vegan, I was vegan for ethical reasons and I'm still vegan for ethical reasons, but whenever vegans or raw vegans hear the word protein, it seems like we get triggered because the masses and the propaganda, everybody's like predisposed or prone to think meat, right? Whenever we hear protein, like you need more protein in your diet, like, oh my God, so now you're eating meat? Not at all. It's just realizing the importance of a macronutrient that can be found in plants and also in raw vegan plants, why not? The reason for my change is because there are so many revelations that I want to share with you that I'm taking the time to write them down, to make them more convincing and with basis that I'm basically linking to different um, articles, to different authors, to different researchers, so you can know where I'm coming from because to arrive to this conclusion took me, as I'm telling you, six, six months to 12 months. So probably one year of, you know, shaking my head around the subject like okay you know maybe they, there is some reason behind it um and then six months over the last six months implementing it and actually seeing results um that's why i feel the responsibility to communicate that with my audience um now yeah there were so many revelations and as i said in a single video some people do not retain information by listening to it I do. I like to listen to audiobooks and I think that the information sticks into my brain when I listen to it repeatedly. However, when you read and when you engage with something that is in the written form, you have more access to reflect and also compare with the references and pieces of information that I'm sharing, right? So that's the reason why I haven't um, really make a video like, oh, you know, these are the findings that I have. Um, these are the references that I have because I'm putting everything together in a piece of text that is going to be very well done and professionally done. And I'm going to call it my, my newsletter. Um, it's not newsletter because I'm not selling you anything. I'm not promoting anything. I don't have affiliated links. This account is a hobby of mine, you know, educating people about diet, nutrition, vegan, plant-based diet, um, before raw vegan, now high raw vegan is just for the purposes of making everybody healthy because if everybody is healthier the better we feel the better we act in the society the world needs more healthy people nowadays so yeah it's a win-win actually um so yes i'm spending the time writing it 
making a newsletter, if you want to call it that way. And it's coming together. It's almost finalized. However, I realized, okay, if I want subscribers for my newsletter, because I'm, I want to make a commitment because this is going to keep me engaged. This is going to keep me more responsible for what I read and what I share to sustain it with basis, right? With references and everything. Um, so how can I hold myself accountable other than having a subscriber list that are you know, waiting for that piece of information. I'm not saying on a weekly basis, probably twice a month, because as I said, I have a full-time job. This is not my job. I don't gain anything out of this, but I do it as a, you know, as a, it's a sen I have a sense of responsibility for what I'm uh, promoting here or trying to, to, to raise awareness, right? So yes, I wanted to write this newsletter and I realized, well, I don't have anywhere to post it. I don't want, I don't have a hosting service. I don't have a website. I don't have any of those things. So first things first, I needed to learn how to make a website. It's coming together. It's not going to be fancy at all because I'm making it myself um, just to just to post the, the blog entries, right? Or the newsletters. And then if people want to refer to that, they can come and read it in their personal time. Or if they want to subscribe, obviously there is a form that you can enter your email and receive that newsletter. And also I'm doing it because um, some accounts all of a sudden, you know, get hacked. I got hacked uh, probably in 2019 before COVID. I got hacked for six months. I was absent from this account. So something can happen. There is no way for me to communicate with my audience other than having their email accounts so I can send the information like, hey, this is what's happening, right? Or if YouTube decided that, you know, they're no longer support raw vegan or high raw vegan content, who knows? You know, you never know. So it's better to have a list of people who are interested in your information. So I'm going to do that. And it's coming together, as I said, it's going to be, I, I'm trying to do it not so long and probably I'm going to do it in parts, but it's basically three to four revelations about the protein consumption that needs to be increased regardless if you're working out or not. Part of the reasons why this revelation came to me is because I was trying to work out when I realized the importance of muscle as a metabolic endocrine organ. So I'm going to throw some buzzwords for you if you want to research and understand more about the importance of protein in our diet, more protein than what is usually recommended in the vegan and raw vegan circles, right? Less than 10% or low protein. I think we need moderate protein. And by moderate, I don't mean like 50%, you know, or I don't think, I don't, I don't mean like eat a steak. No, no, I'm talking about plant-based protein. In order to increase your protein amount, you need to most of the times introduce cooked food, um, cooked forms of protein like legumes, tempeh, uh, organic soy, non-GMO, things like that to achieve those grams. Now, again, I'm not claiming that I have all the answers. Quite the contrary, I'm actually willing to listen to you, from you, listening to your opinions. I'm going to write the newsletter and I'm going to make a video out of it, out of it so people have the chance to participate in the comment sections, right? More questions, more interaction, more discussion, so I can keep creating material about it. It took me a year to realize this, so I don't make changes lightly, like, oh, you know, I feel in the mood of increasing my protein because somebody says so. No, obviously not. I say, as I said, it took me one year to get convinced. And yeah, and I'm using a filter right now. Why? Because I've been using filters, right? Like filters that help you enhance your appearance, not in a way that distorts my, my face so much, but in a way that uh, makes me f look more alert because it's the end of the day, I just finished work, you know, long time, um, uh, full-time job and like coming here to be presentable on YouTube. It's not like I exercise, took a shower and I'm at my best, no. So I'm using a filter because unfortunately we are so quick to judge. And if I don't use filter now as a high raw vegan, People are gonna start pointing out like, oh, you have so many imperfections that you didn't have when you were high raw, when you were fully raw vegan, right? So I'm using this filter just to show you that with the same filter that I'm being using all the time is me. But in previous videos, I said, you know what? I don't feel this is honest to show filters when in reality we just need to embrace who we are, right? Without enhancement. Obviously, I have a bright light in front of my face. So it makes me look more presentable and softens my features. But if I decide to take the filter, um, some pores are gonna show up. So raw veganism is super important. High raw veganism is very important, but there's so many other variables that makes us healthy or unhealthy. 
And that's something that many people have to understand. And one of those things is resistance training to keep your muscle mass because muscle is an endocrine organ. So buzzwords for you to research the topic, um, muscle as an endocrine organ, body recomposition. Um, women have different metabolic processes than men. Women react different to different hormones. Women have lower testosterone than men. Um, what else? What else? Uh, bone density associated with the health of your muscles, osteoporosis in vegans, um, collagen, elastin, keratin, soft tissue, subcutaneous tissue, all of those things that I'm telling besides muscle is protein related. So another thing, uh, dietary recommendations by the WHO, it seems like plant-based doctors and raw vegan doctors who promote a low protein diet have been basing their recommendations on the current recommendations of the WHO. So everybody's happy like, oh, you know, we don't eat that much. However, they haven't changed the guidelines when there is research, is research happening right now that points out that probably those dietary recommendations are just the minimum necessary to avoid deficiencies. So do you wanna be eating something just to avoid deficiencies or you wanna be eating something to have enough surplus so you can fulfill all your requirements in your body? So, so many things that I want to cover, but the newsletter, the written form is better for me because I can express myself better. As you can notice, I have an accent. I, My mother tongue is Spanish. I learned English in my adulthood, so it's, different to express myself in the verbal form than in the written form. In the written form, I can write scientific essays and all that because I am trained, uh, you know, uh, as a medical student, as a resident, and, and I, I was required to write certain papers, and I know how to do that. So I feel like that's going to be interesting for people who want to really dig deep into the subject and have basis and to contrast, right, to contrast where I'm coming from. Again, I'm not trying to debunk anyone. If somebody comes to me and say, hey, because I'm trying to heal an autoimmune disorder, of course, of course, do go full, fully raw, right, for a, few, for a few months, probably, until your inflammation is basically decreased. That's what Dr. Brooke Olner does with, uh, you know, the anti-lupus regimen that she has. Um, doctor, another doctor does that, the same thing for uh, inflammatory bowel disease, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously going fully raw is super beneficial, super beneficial. And you can live on that if you are very careful, if you plan it very well, and if you are not just in the honeymoon period where, oh, I can live off fruit, you know? Yes, you can live with fruit, but the question is, are you fulfilling all your needs? Are you building muscle mass for when you age? All the things that I'm gonna cover in the newsletter are the things that I'm just throwing here as buzzwords for you if you want to research those topics. So uh, lastly, I'm gonna say that I want to apologize if any of you got harm because there was a misunderstanding in the message that I was disseminating before about, you know, oh, being, fully rise the only way, or that's the only way that you're going to be healthy. I never said that. I don't remember saying that. But, you know, the influence that a doctor can have in someone is, is quite heavy, you know, especially if the person doesn't have criteria or doesn't have, um, you know, like more brain power to challenge what a doctor is saying, right? So I have had negative comments on YouTube from people who eat meat, et cetera, et cetera, saying how, how irresponsible, right? That you're recommending this, et cetera, et cetera. I never pay attention to that. However, it's, respons it's my responsibility to come here and apologize if at some point somebody got into a deficiency or got honey promoting a fully raw vegan diet. At this moment, after five years, I didn't have any deficiencies. I'm perfectly fine, but I'm looking in the long, in the long run. I'm reaching 40 and I want to age gracefully and I want to avoid the loss of muscle mass as we age. And I realize the importance of protein and resistant training for that it has to go hand in hand. You cannot just stuff yourself with protein, right? And not exercise. What's the point? Like it has to go hand in hand. Same with high, um, fully raw vegan diet. If you don't exercise to burn those carbohydrates, you're going to gain fat. It is what it is. And 
so many things, metabolic processes that a single video is not enough to explain, a single newsletter is not enough to explain. So my very first newsletter is about protein and requirements, the three revelations that I had to make this change. And uh, probably I'm gonna enlist the following topics to discuss in subsequent newsletters. So stay tuned. I'm gonna create first the website is almost ready. The newsletter is almost finished. So I just need to make a link between the newsletter provider with the hosting uh, website provider so they both can be linked and I can start collecting emails and you start receiving those automatically. So hang in there, it's coming. And but yeah, I'm a high raw vegan. I discover a lot about the importance of protein and yeah, stay tuned for that newsletter. It's gonna be very well written and very well based, right? It's not gonna be like, hey, you know, click on this for your promotional offer. No, nothing, nothing. I don't promote anything, I don't sell anything. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment respectfully, please, respectfully, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.